incredible score on 5-0 and oh in HTC Korea this season. We've not dropped a single map here. Now also, MVP Flag was one of the teams that brought in Medivh into this map. And maybe not this time, as they will likely going to control over the global. And also some poking comp like Li Ming and Sergeant Hammer going into their hands. That would be the problem. L5 seems to be... They have way too many problems to solve, solve during the draft compared to MVP Black, and they're making right choices, but th there is not a solid answer all the time for themselves. Yeah. Well, we're going to jump into this draft in just a moment. Global's so important here. Zeratul, was, this is his best map, mm -hmm. and this is a map he's always been highest prioritized on. And we'll see if uh, L5 has something specific they can do in this draft, because they will have first pick once again to try to control this map. The draft is live. Let's start it off. L5 with first ban. Very likely seen in the Zebo ban as well uh, on this map as we did in the last one. It's very powerful here. It usually goes to be a fairly long game, not as long as Dragonshire, but he's just so good at delaying. It's going to be the Muradin, though. Interesting. Of course, sign on that Muradin was just a monster sitting onto that front line. Soaked up all the damage, I believe. Died only once in game two. It's very close. This may be the game where L5 gets a Zeratul. See if they take it. Black trying to decide between the Vala and the Falstad. I feel like the Falstad is the better choice. I think they really want it. And they're not sure if L5 will take the Vala. So they're like, mm, maybe we can actually take the Falstad ourselves if we don't ban it. I think L5 may look for the first pick in the Zebo if they leave. Uh, they leave it open. It's going to be that or the Zeratul, you have to imagine. They do ban the Falstad. There's the Zeratul insta lock as the camera flies over to Jung Ah. One of the better Zeratuls in the world, and in fact, better than Kyocha, most would argue. Mm -hmm. We saw some amazing action coming out from Jung Ah, especially in the Eastern Clash. There's an instant response for MVP Black with Dehaka with the global rotations and Li Ming going into Reset's hands again. It's going to be a Big obstacle for L5. Kocha they need to have a solid comp so the reset does not get the reset. Kocha now knows he's going to be on the Dahaka. Mm -hmm. so all eyes on him for this moment. He's going to have to be doing the split soak, which is actually, for the most part, for MVP Black, but Sake's job on the Falstad, even on the Ragnaros. Let's see, will he take the Nazebo here? Still available. Can get pretty tanky. Make it tough for Leeming to get the resets. Could even take Superstition, but that's pretty uncommon. And it'd be Ragnaros, though, instead, and Tyrael. They want their Void Prison and Smash combo to be used for themselves now. And even with Tyrael coming in. This feels like a Grey Main ban, right? Or just an ETC. I think ETC ban, unless Black has, an, well, has in mind of taking it instead. That's the one thing I was thinking at first was the ETC ban, but then I realized if they, they win ETC, we don't have any range damage in this composition, so I think it's just going to be solo Tyrael with some sort of range coming out. We are really seeing the supports going down the list of draft. It used to be first or second rotations coming in all the time, but it is now banned or just picked at the very last of the draft all the time. Well, Black can pick up the Tychus here. Would be a good choice to pair with Leeming. Sergeant Hammer also an option for poking on the altars. Varian is a very solid option. When the taunt comes in, Leeming would basically have 100% hit on all th all the skill shots. And they're looking for obviously a tank here as well. Against Tyrael, Arthas is highly picked. Muradin was banned earlier. This is part of L5's plan. They're going to take the hammer over the Tychus for Alter Delay and Alter Control for the Interrupts, and ETC will be the tank choice. They don't have it for the... They don't have anything to pair with it in terms of Divine Shield. They could run the Uther. Feels like it would be too risky, though, overall, especially against Azeratul here. It's definitely an option. Lucio is, I feel like, even more likely, though. It's going to power up the speed of the rotations with ETC a little bit more stronger. We're sure if they grab onto Lucia, but maybe having Zero Two on the other side, picking Uther and going going with the Shrink Ray, 
may be the answer against so Zero Two. It's going to be Vala. You know, we thought maybe let's we'll see the gray main with the Tyrael. It is going to be Lucio, as I uh, expected, over the Uther. Vala with Ariel here. So much protection, more protection even than Reset had in the previous set. Mm -hmm. Basically, the the drafts kind of swapped from game number two from Dragonshire's draft. Yeah. Okay, the Zeratul is going to look to finish off the kills when Vala is doing that damage. Up in the front lines, so he has a lot of protection here. Ragnaros' Molten Core also going to be very useful at delaying the tribute. Or the ultras, I should say, sorry. The channeling there. But MVP Black has Li Ming on their side. Reset gets his favorite hero, his best hero. He is 11 and 1 on it now. He wants to make that 12. As we go into this third map, can MVP Black close out the series 3 0? Let's find out right now. In blue, MVP Black, Sake on Sergeant Hammer, Reset on the Ming, Tist on ETC, Kyocha on Dahaka, and Merry Day on Lucio. And in red, L5, SCSE on Bala, Nacho Jin on Ragnaros, Jonga on Zero Two, Nobles on Tyrio, and Swoy on Ario. It's time, and once again, Merry Day is going to be doing the wall ride build at level one. Force armor for Li Ming. Everything else looking pretty normal. L5 bringing in Tyrael and Ariel combo. Strong Diablo combo. Jonga is actually the one who finds himself harassed here. The magic missiles connect even while he's cloaked and Lucio was chasing him down. Meriday's gonna get out of here. She's trying to bait into the spider mines here. Successful tactic. Reset. Taking a lot of damage here, but we'll escape. Look at the accuracy. His prediction on movement is pretty good. <laughs> this is just a funny exchange as well. With the armor from Tist. Not going to take too much damage here. Just wants to harass a little bit. Ooh. Getting a little bit aggressive there as the gleaming movement was coming. So he wanted to perhaps come over there and do some ganking, but Tyrael's there to deny. There's a sustain in top lane. Now switched, Kyocha on Dehaka and Nachojin on Rag. It's going to be tough for Ragnaros to catch up to the rotations of Dehaka. Once he starts to make that rotational as he Kyocha comes down for the grab and there's the kill. Material blown up instantly there. Once again, the power of resets Li Ming. Just so accurate. Connecting with his magic missiles and the orb. Maximum range. Once he gets Calamity at level 7, that's going to be his big spike. Also First, CC coming off from Parse Light and Kyocha was nearly perfection, so Tyrael could not all drain away at all. First altar phase is live in 5 seconds. There's a lot of delay tactics that Black have. They're going to channel first. Actually, not even going to commit to uh, invading. So the Molten Core is used. Tyrael is, Tyrael is cancelling the channel on the Dehaka. This Molten Core is, going, is not going to last for a longer time. They are being a little bit indecisive here. They want to... Ooh, there's the pick on the Ariel though. <laughs> they made that decision very decisively. Kyojis is continuing to channel. They do get the bot altar, and they will get the top as well. Yeah, L5 definitely not committing hard there, just trying to delay, but... Not able to channel at the bottom either. Now Noblesse is going to get caught. I feel like L5 is just almost losing too much momentum in this series. Seems to really be affecting them as this is just uncharacteristic play. Noblesse will be picked here. No way out. And I think that the momentum is wholly in MVP Black's favor to win this series 3-0. For either team to win this series 3-0. It's kind of an unthinkable thing with how close and skilled these two teams are. This is a series you expect to go to game five. L5 were the favorites, and though they lost the Eastern Clash, they've had more consistent results in this tournament. They look to be the stronger team. However, now Black trying to do the unthinkable, win this series 3-0, the only score they can win the series with in order to advance directly to the midseason brawl, and they are one win away from doing just that, taking a big lead in this game. Of course, the, both of the teams still has one more match left in the season, but it is very likely 
that they will also have a dominant series over the other teams. Sure. It's they've not lost any C to any other teams but each other. In Envy Black's case, L5 didn't even lose to Black last time. The even crazier than Envy Black winning this 3-0 is them not defeating their opponents next week. That would be even more of, I, more of an upset, of course, but it's that Tust has been so just sitting on that bush the entire time. It should be Zeratu that's actually trying to trying to be hiding and pressuring all the lanes. L5 is really Feeling that pressure of BTC just rotating up and down. Maybe he'll just power slide in, try to look for picks. See the idea. Second altar phase has started in. Once more, Noblesse is caught. Does have the Aldruins, but Test was waiting for him. Couldn't get the angle to face melt him. Still on cooldown. Takes a lot of damage, and that's no murder, and he's going to have to go and hit the well before he comes back into the next fight. Aldruin already used here. Try to come over, find an angle. Molten Core once again, but looks like Black is just going to kind of wait this out. Even if they trade even, it's pretty good for them. They have Kyocha on this global hero. He gets the first channel, for, and now he's just going to head over. It's going to be a 5v5 with Molten Core starting to fade out. Saki's very low, though. Taking a lot of damage there. Meriday's going to have to heal him up. But look at this. SC blown up immediately. Reset gets doubles here. And he wants to make it more. There's another one coming down. Reset's accuracy on these magic missiles, incredible. Always hitting every three. It will be picked off here, though, by Junga. And that's going to be very close. And Nobles is looking for his life. Ragnaros does join the fight and picks off one more. ETC goes down. That fight was nearly about to snowball out of control with Reset able to get those critical mass procs over and over again. He couldn't hold on to the fight there. It was Junga who was actually the hero. Had Junga not come over and actually hit those very well, uh, you know, to get in there and blow reset up before you could actually get another heal and another reset. Would have probably been a wipe and Black would have taken that altar. So John comes in at the nick of time and L5 actually takes an EXP lead with this. Only four altar shots behind MVP Black currently. And resets, which is skill shots really making a difference. The Bala would not have died if even few shots of the, those missiles missed on that on that fight just now though. No. So reset will be the target that all five is going to go for and Bala and SCSC, you gotta be careful. You cannot die like that from the beginning of the game. No, definitely not. Fight went long enough for him to respawn. And just leaving Swoy alone feels bad, man. <laughs> feels bad, man, indeed. Judgment! And Judge they're going for it! Here all it goes! The way that was a split decision to dive this what? bell tower and they get the double. It's gonna come at a high cost. It's gonna cost. be a three-man three -man march, but no follow-up. Just is going to sacrifice himself, and Boy Prison does not connect at the very end. Yeah, Meriday is too slick for that. Gets out, and obviously at the top here, you can see Kyocha is split pushing. So the split-second decision to use Judgment to get the double kill. Mm -hmm. See this sometimes held with other heroics. For example, when um, the popular talent for ETC was stage dive and not Moss because he'd hold it just to get the one Moss right before the fight when he didn't need to stage dive. See moments like this for heroes where they have both options available but for Aterial this is almost never seen and they got them the double kill here gave them a nice edge but later on in the game yes. they're probably going to wish they had the sanctification to protect Vala Protect Ragnaros in these fights. Yeah, especially when Li Ming comes in for that reset. I think I think MVP Black is actually happy to see that judgment coming in. They did get two kills, but for what? For a high and cost. For a very high cost, and from now on, they cannot change at all. Remember, yeah. MVP Black doesn't have cleanse. That's one thing, that's one reason why this move was even possible in the first place. I think that's the idea here. Listen, we're not saying that judgment is never gonna get them another pick, but just not gonna grant any protection. Uh, that sanctification would otherwise have part of the reason why Tyrael is so strong. And Black does have lots of targets that's pretty weak against Judgment uh, when focused down like Gleaming, Sergeant Hammer, and also Lucio. So that is a very good choice indeed for Nobles to come out. But it's, it's going to put himself in the danger zone. Kocha coming around from Ooh. the other bush. Does not get the hook on the SC, actually Oof. gets it right afterwards. 
Zombie Ray popped a little bit early as he gets oh. this. Very low, Brawler is taken, all, taken down already. Okay, Jungha removes reset from the fight. That's super important here, but Swoy is so low. And Jungha's now very, very low himself. Disintegrates can pop to get the second kill here. And Nostrogen needs to get out too, or he's going to find himself sniped by the Disintegrate. This is going to be another channel for MVP Black. Got it, getting the pick super early there was what won them that fight. Reset is just so good right now, yeah, man. If you're losing your eyes in those team fights, just keep your eye on the Li Ming. I know even following Li Ming Barca alone will be pretty hard sometimes, but that's what that's why Reset is just so powerful right now. Oh, it was Ben Legends uh, in esports in Korea, you know, going as far back as uh, Slayer's Boxer, you know, Baker, now one of the new legends. And in Heroes of the Storm, you know, I feel like Rich kind of held that title for a long time, but if Reset continues to play like this, man, he is going to be the guy that everyone looks up to. He's just so, so consistent. The Magic Missile's always, th all three of them connecting. That's why it looks like he's doing more damage than every other Leeming, because he's, his prediction of his target's movement are so good. And then once he gets his resets and his Calamity damage starts coming out, he just doesn't miss. And he's just so quick with his hands to make sure that he can get all of his combos off. This is actually a quick reaction by Kyocha to escape and get out of here. And the five is going to look for a boss with this big rotation. I think Black might have messed this up a little bit. They didn't realize the movement of L5. So that's why Kyocha decided to solo camp. They are going to come up for the contest, though. Kyocha's going to get on top of it. Already used adaptation. Here's the sound barrier. Are they going to steal this? J judgment used here. But already one down on the side of Black. That's a double. Disc goes in for the Mosh, it totally whips here. Sake has to use first aid. Jungha here is gonna come in to look for the finish off low. It's actually Sulfurus that gets it. Four down for MVP Black. They tried to invade and went horribly wrong. Slow rota rotation, slow realization mm -hmm. that this is what L5 was, where they were moving, what they were doing. Kyocha had to use adaptation because of the camp he was taking earlier, so he didn't have it available. Decided to try to step on it anyways and delay, and it just did not happen. He was the first to die. And L5 took a convincing team fight win. Uh, MVP Black was very rushed to go all the way in. They did not have the best positioning. Well, L5 had already positioned into a safe positioning for themselves. I feel like they didn't even have to contest, really. They were leading in score, and maybe they could have soaked a little bit EXP because they are down in EXP. It's already been done, and Black is down almost one and a half levels now, almost two levels with this bell tower gone in the bottom. They're down two bell towers. Coach will finally get the cap. <laughs> Gets the last minion there. And he's going to push the top bell tower at least a little bit. The first bell tower will finally be cleared. Black will get both bell towers back, but it's just annoying that they lose map control during this moment in time. At least they have the global, which makes it less uh, less of a bad thing for them, more bearable. Now Actually, this it looks like L5 wants to protect this bell tower. Now this L5 looks like the L5 that we usually see. And they are back into the game. We saw some crazy the synergy on that team fight was just the regular L5 momentum. Judgment is on such a low cooldown. It's always going to be available in these fights. That's true. Void is ready. Just looking for the setup here. They want to protect this bell tower, protect these pumpkin men. The escort is coming in, three of them. Malfurion was banned, so we're going to have to basically boop them or knock them out of the fight before they reach the edge. Looks like they're able to do it. Got so much poke with the hammer and the leaming to make sure this happens. Frog Rock is completed. And the Aka has been soaking on top this entire time, and they just hit 16. Now they match in numbers 3v3 on that bottom bell tower. Seems like they just want to stall a lot of time until the next altar phase spawns. Protecting this bell tower is so key because it means that. They're going to, even if they lose the altar phase, going to take less shots, but it also gives them map control down here. And it can always threaten the, uh, it can always threaten the wall push with the escort of the pumpkin men, as they've done several times. They're actually taking it right now. But it looks like Black will finally push them away for the last triple altar phase now. Just want to take this down. Reset taking a lot of damage. SC is just. Constantly positioning himself. Even using Molten Core to just save this bell tower as 
the alters will yeah. spawn just now. This is an interesting decision because now they're going to give up both top towers. Wow. Yes, it's going to be for it's going to be six instead of eight that they lose. But I don't know about this decision to actually molten core there. His coach is being collapsed upon, and Black is actually not going to save him. It looks like only reset comes up here. Black with a very slow rotation. Here's the judgment coming in. Reset's already teleported away though. Verity coming into the fight now. Coach actually survives using adaptation. Here comes Tess for the double mosh. There's a double mosh, but insta cleanse, insta canceled, and after Void Prison right away. They want this so bad right now. Salter here. There's the grab onto Jung Ah. He does get away. Okay, here comes Tess in with another big power slide. Nitrogen is down out of the fight. SC, no protection to triple for MVP Black. Really felt like that decision to go ahead and Molten Core there was super greedy. Because now they're going to lose the Bell Tower and four members. They probably lose one of their own Bell Towers as well. The minions will naturally clear the bot Bell Tower. It looks like it's going to be Kyoto to go down and make sure that happens. And they're going to push the mid Bell Tower to maximize the shots they take here. So here's this one. See if Lucio channels first. I think they're actually going to be super greedy and get the five shot. Yeah, I think they're waiting for it. Yeah, they're going to wait for it. There's just nobody alive to harass. Jungle alone can't stop this. The only thing they're missing is the top wave. It's, it's a big wave, so Lucio is actually going to the top. Soak up some EXP as they are now leading with 19 to 18. They're going to try to take this bot bell tower as well. They could go six and two here. So the choice of judgment is really costing them a lot. It right definitely now. is. The decision of Molten Core there and protect the Bell Tower instead of using that for delay or rotating up to stop the double uh, altars there was also very expensive for L5. It definitely did not work out in their favor. Also, Kyocha choosing and deciding to go towards the enemy altar instead of their own yeah, made a lot of difference. What a great decision by Kyocha there. The global that uh, this hero provides, mm -hmm. so important. They knew the entire team, most of the team of L5 was down there. It needed, they needed a lot more time to climb up to their own altar. This is actually... So they're going to get this for free too. With no sanctification, it's hard to actually control this. L5 knows the only objective they can get is to counterwise take out this bell tower. Jung is going to clear the mid one. But they're going to lose four of their core health here just to get back even. Actually, reset protects this, so it's still going to be the 4-4 as the top push is actually trying to take away that as well. See how much pressure Reset has on Zeratu. It is not so common to have Zeratu running away from Li Ming as Li Ming's skill shots. It's really hard to land on every single time. Especially with Force Armor. It's a lot easier if you can hit those. Uh, you know, you get a lot of protection against Zeratu's harass. Okay, we do have 20 for all teams. Zavala's gonna have more range for her auto attacks, which is gonna make it a lot safer for her to poke and also to chase. Some hesitation on 20 for Ragnaros. Here's the judgment, super deep in is Noble S. Wants to set up the fight beforehand, closing that gap, but no follow-up. Imagine if he had Sanctification, how much more powerful that would be here. But he went for the upgrade onto Angel Justice. Yeah, it's basically so a global now. Yeah, it's so much more range and also less cooldown and sake will be okay not okay temporal flux damage. here is going to give some slows if he gets a reset there is not going to be a retreat here Kyocha sneaks over to channel this altar no interrupt and Junga actually comes in but he doesn't even get the interrupt and now he's going to take so much damage does get out which is very huge second altar here now under fire MV Black wants to move in and take control of this zone judgment's back available here Perhaps Noblesse can start the fight off correctly. Here we go, on to Merry Day. Boom, the insta blow up. Perfect focus fire here. That's no more support for MVP Black. They probably just should give this up. And Twist also blinked away from the fight. There's no way of connecting it with Mosh. Mosh is available now, but they have no damage as Void Prison is connected with so much damage. Reset super greedy to try to come in to get the kill onto Jung Ah, but the Void goes down. He's caught, and he's gonna be the second to die. Tist will be the third. Well done here by L5. They can turn this around now, take some altars, or rather uh, bell towers. And we'll get the altar as well. See if they actually are as greedy as MVP Black was and try to get the bell tower first. Looks like that is the plan. They're gonna take both mercenary caps mm -hmm. as well. With this many kills, you have the whole world as your oyster. Uh, if you're L5 here, looking for the kill onto Kyocha as well even. Not gonna happen. He used rewind. Judgment comes in. Judgment comes in at the right time. There is a kill. On to Dehaka now. Now the spawns are 
messed up for MVP Black. It's gonna take a long 60 seconds on the Haka to come back. Yep, and they're gonna get double bell towers with this. The altar is actually still alive. Kyojo couldn't sneak it because he's dead. Nashujin's gonna come over here, channel this right now. Six shots making it 12. It's gonna bring down a lot of core health down, of course. It is very late game. Yeah, it's one third of the health. I'm gonna grab this camp. They could even try to get these six bell tower control. It's not even unreasonable at this point. They're gonna look to defend instead though to go for the escort. 22 seconds left on Kyocha's respawn. Mm -hmm. Now they see the they see the power of judgment and MVP Black really staying together. This Mary Day just melted away with that judgment smash and everything combo together right there. Okay, the escort's still a ways away. They have a lot of poke. To bring this down. Okay, remember judgments on such a low cooldown, 40 seconds. So it's always available here for Noblesse to start to engage. They're gonna stay in the kill zone very safely, even in siege mode to defend against that escort. Top push is really strong, but it's not gonna be enough to kill the bell tower until Kyocha gets there. Jung is already going up to meet him and clear. This bell tower isn't gonna be held forever, but it's very difficult for Black to engage in. They have this comp that's basically designed to poke, not to dive. It looks like they're going to try to even up and even get ahead with this top uh, camp being taken. Will Junga stay here? That's the question. Oh, he realizes Coach is here. They call him out as missing. Jung actually misses the scout. <laughs> he should realize, though, that one's missing. Yeah, he does. I'm pretty sure he does, but it's just not taken at the moment. And even Leeming comes up. Maybe yeah, they're I think trying to snipe onto Junga instead. I think that's what they want to do here. I don't know if Junga fully realized this. Either way, he's now moving away. And this means Kyocha can continue to split push that top lane with no more pressure there. Mm -hmm. Jertel shows mid. They're protecting this bell tower to have the more pressure they, as they can also have that Molten Core go onto that bell tower this if it's theirs. So risky for reset Jonga because Judgment, Judgment could have been used there, but they want to take this camp instead. And with the sappers at the bottom, there's going to be a lot more pressure than maybe Black. They're going to... Try to look for time, but time does not work for them. It's actually working for L5 right now. Yeah, they're actually going to rotate away for the defense. It's going to be five shots against them, though, as a result. Five versus three. Perhaps just letting the sappers go through and uh, fighting over this altar would have been the better option. They're going for a boss. Straight boss right in. They, if they get four more shots, only three more shots will be will complete the game for L5. I think Black is making some rotational mistakes this game, and this is one of them that's going to cost them big. They're now L5 now has core lethal with any altar channel or another boss take when it respawns. Black denied the three from the bottom. If those had gone through, they'd be dead now, but at a very, very high cost. I don't think it was worth it. And now they're committing mid instead of clearing their own in the bot lane, which means that they're always going to be threatened by the minion wave or the, uh, the, the sappers. I feel like they should definitely back off as they are now and take that bottom Alter, because if that's not alive, then they're always going to be threatened by those mercenary caps. And that's so literally lethal for them now if all three go through. Mm -hmm. So they're just going to go trade, ex exchange the bell towers onto their side. But lag if the next depends on the next spawn, if, if it's a triple spawn of altars, I think Black has just no, no choice to just. I think they just have to give up by that point if it's a triple al altar spawn. They're actually going to steal this, which is nice, and relieve some of the pressure. The double spawns will even be challenging for them, and they're definitely hoping it's a solo spawn because they can take the team fight that way and win this. They have to win, or they have to stop every altar from now on. Even if they, okay, this is lucky for Black. If they kill this, it's going to also relieve a lot of the pressure. Still not going to be enough to save them if this gets channeled by L5. Judgment is such a powerful tool. Look at Noblesse's positioning. He wants to get the flank. He's spotted though, and now he's alone. Holy grounds to save himself. This is such a tense game here. Black winning this almost gu certainly guarantees them a spot in Sweden. And if Black wins the team fight, they can get the Beltar on bot, and then Sapper, three Sappers in will be completed with nine. Resets channeling. If anybody dies, this could be disastrous for MVP Black. Jonga is spotted for the RAS. No bus can judgment at any moment. <laughs> this is such a tense moment here. See how far Mary Day is back on the back line. He knew he knows what happens right here. Okay, 
Okay, Noblesse comes in once again. He's eating a lot of damage. There's a far slide on Doesn't have Noblesse. hard shield. He's very low. Jungle comes around from the side. There's a sound barrier to protect, and Ragnaros is caught. He has to be Aegis here. Nacho Jin, very low. Okay, this is a really good Void Prison zoning them out, but Reset can still do damage. Both teams, you can feel the pressure in their movements here. Listen to being a better trade for MVP Black. Nitrogen survives. He's going to go for the Molten Core, but it's a bit too late. There's the Interrupt, actually. It's not too late. SC gets the Interrupt, and now he's going to just retreat and back off. Molten Core is going to give so much pressure here. Black cannot let this channel, or they lose the game. They lose the game, indeed. Reset goes There's in. the Big Judgment coming in. They're looking for the pick on the Sake, and they get it. They get it. Molten Core is... And Multicore is over. Merida is so low. Actually, SDSC takes it now. Well, here's the Mosh. Two man Mosh, but canceled right away with the Smash. Very well done here. Looks like L5 is going to win this fight. Three dead already. There's the fourth. Reset can't carry alone. The B steps come out as L5 will take this win. There's the Alter Channel. The three shots will go into the core. And this means MVP Black can no longer take the direct seed to the mid-season brawl. They